For the week of September 24th, our grammar bits is going to revolve around uh, prepositions. Students will have a quiz every week for the next three weeks in order to memorize the, the groups of prepositions. So for today's group, this is the first list. There are 23 words, and we started class by talking about how to study for this. Um, students came up with ideas of making a song um, and chunking them. Um, seemed to be the best op option. So we came up with a strategy that would work in that there were nine A prepositions that students could start learning about, above, across, after, against, along, among, around, at. And we talked about repeating them over and over until we thought we knew them. And then before we moved on, we needed to get out a piece of paper and actually try writing them because we do also need to be able to spell them correctly. And once we were be able, able to write all nine of the A's correctly, three or four times, then it would be time to move on to the B's. And there are also nine B words. And we also noticed that eight of the nine words begin with BE together, before, behind, below, beneath, beside, besides with an S, between, and beyond, and then that little one by. And then we call this last category the DEFs, the D-E-Fs. And there are only five of them, down, during, except for from. So students need to have this list of prepositions memorized by Friday. They'll come into class, I'll give them a piece of paper, and basically they just need to be able to write them down from memory. After that, we actually started talking about what is a preposition and how are these um, prepositions put into sentences. And so we started by looking at some terminology and what is a preposition. And students actually took notes of this on um, a closed notes sheet that they have um, that they're going to want to use for their homework tomorrow as well. Um, and so we said that a preposition is any word that links a noun to another word in a sentence. So in this sentence, we have the word, the preposition before. And we can look back on our list and see, whoops, where is it? We can look back on our list and see that before is on our list of prepositions. The next part that has to be in a prepositional phrase, we've got to find that noun. What is the noun that's being linked to another noun in the sentence? So we found that if we find our preposition, it helps us find a phrase that begins with a preposition and ends with that noun. And that noun has a special job. It's called the object of the preposition. And in between there, we're allowed to have these modifiers. And we've already talked about modifiers a lot this year. Modifiers are just adjectives and adverbs, and they're used to add description in a sentence. So we said that there's a formula that we can use any time we want to recognize a prepositional phrase. We look for a preposition that has a noun at the end and can have modifiers in the middle. They don't have to be there, but they can be. So we looked at the rest of the sentence and we found another prepositional phrase. And it was kind of tricky because we had two prepositions, or what looked like prepositions. We had two here and we had two here. So we had to go back to our formula and say, well, if a prepositional phrase starts with a preposition, it has to have a noun or a pronoun at the end. And since go is not a noun or a pronoun, then it's not a prepositional phrase. Wendy's is a restaurant, so it's a place. So we said this is a prepositional phrase. Begins with the preposition to, and it ends with a noun, and that noun has a job called the object of the preposition. Now, in looking at some tricks, that, tricky parts that come up with prepositional phrase, we have two other parts of speech, an adverb. And sometimes an adverb will be seen by itself, um, or a preposition will be seen by itself, in which case it's not being used as an adverb anymore, or as a preposition anymore, it's being used as an adverb. So if we look at our sentence up here, before the game, I wanted to go to Wendy's. If we change that sentence before, I wanted to go to Wendy's before, there's no noun after the word before, so it would be being used as an adverb. I wanted to go to the game after. If after is by itself, then it's being used as an adverb 
an adverb. If I said I wanted to go to the game after dinner, then it would be a preposition because there's a noun at the end. So I had students mark down these five um, words that are commonly seen as adverbs but can also be prepositions. And then we had that tricky one which was two. And whenever we see two with a verb, we call it an infinitive. And this is how students are going to be coding these in class. We're going to put brackets around infinitives. And the end result is that we're left with only two words in this sentence. And we've talked about in the past that what does a sentence have to have in order to be a sentence? It's a subject and a verb. And so by getting rid of all these extra phrases and things, we're able to find prepositional or find the subject and the verb a little bit easier. So after that, we actually got out our highlighters and we went through and we had our list sitting in front of us and we looked for prepositional phrases. So like is on our prepositions list. So according to our formula, we have to have a noun at the end of it, like Mrs. Culleton. And because there's an and here, we want to check and see if it extends itself, and it does, like Mrs. Culleton and Mrs. Ryan. So both of those nouns that are at the end of the prepositional phrase are objects of prepositions. And then we looked at our list because there is another one there. Of is a preposition. So we want to keep going till we found a noun of many bugs. And so we labeled bugs the object of the preposition. It's the noun at the end. And then many is a modifier and it describes how many bugs? Many. Um, I want to look at another one that actually had a trick to it. Let's look at number five. Ant tunnels let air into the soil to help plant growth. We look for a word that's on our prepositions list, into. So we'd ask, into what? We're looking for a noun at the end, into the soil. So soil is our object of the preposition. And we always want to keep seeing if there's more than one. And we found two. And so according to our prepositional phrase, we have to have a noun at the end. And we don't have one. We have two help. So we call that an infinitive because it has two plus a verb. So over the rest of this week, um, and for homework this week, students will be practicing in this idea of finding prepositional phrases, getting used to looking at their paper to find them, and then hopefully eventually in the next three weeks, they'll have all the prepositions memorized and won't need to depend on that list quite so much.